So welcome uh, everyone to our Coffee with the Curator, Color with a U2 uh, session. My name is Deborah Antonsik and I'm the Director Curator at Riverbrink. So as most of you are certainly aware, uh, the exhibition here at Riverbrink is one of two that were um, intended to coincide with an international conference of SACWA members in Toronto. So this is uh, Color with a U2, a juried exhibition of work uh, by members of SACWA, the Studio Art Quilt Associates. SACWA is a nonprofit organization founded in 1989 to promote the art quilt through exhibitions, publications, and professional development opportunities. This exhibition, I'm showing you just uh, the entrance uh, that you would see if you were uh, coming into the gallery, is one of two exhibitions. And the other one is at the Homer Watson House and Gallery in Kitchener. Um, and they're hosting their exhibition until September 7th. The exhibition of quilts in a fine art museum is fairly recent and speaks to the importance of organizations like SACWA um, because quilts are not traditionally thing as fine materials or the rather it would have been considered more of a folk art, a craft, uh, quilts as coverlets were utilitarian and also working with fabric was typically gendered as a feminine activity. In Canada, one of the pioneers of the art quilt was Joyce Wheeland, whose dates are 1930 to 1998, who began to work with the medium in the mid 1960s. And I'm showing you here uh, an installation at the Scott Library at York University. It's titled 109 Views. Uh, from 1970 to 71, and it's a quilted cloth assemblage. So 109 views of little landscapes, and I think, uh, as we'll see going through this exhibition, uh, certainly there are echoes with uh, Joyce's work uh, from 1970. Whelan's foray into working with fabric and quilt making grew out of her pioneering work in filmmaking and soft sculptures made of stuffed plastic. Her quilts, the, her quilts acknowledge the importance of the domestic sphere, domestic sphere and the women who worked within it. In this, she was ahead of both the revival of quilt making in the 1970s and the communal cooperative means of production associated with second wave feminism and the work of artists such as Judy Chicago. The practice of a quilting bee as a settler pioneer activity also received attention during the Canadian centennial in 1967. Whelan would typically design her quilts and hire others to do the sewing, often working with her sister Joan. They were described as wall hangings, but also called tapestries by her Toronto dealer Av Isaacs and also fabric collages. The quilts by Joyce Whelan were influenced by pop art as it was known in the UK or Neo Dada as it was known in the United States and it had important links to conceptual art. One of Whelan's goals was to make art accessible to everyone, removing the barriers between high art and craft and between what we associate with high art materials and techniques such as painting. It would take time, but the art world eventually caught up. Thanks to the pioneering work of artists such as Wieland, we now recognize the importance of the medium and the artists who work with fabric in many forms. So as I mentioned, uh, Color with a U2 is a juried exhibition. And in the call for submissions, Canadian members of SACWA were invited to reflect on the uniqueness of Canada, of Canadian cultural identity, the title of the exhibition with the explicit reference to the distinctive Canadian spelling of words like color and labor and neighbor was a means of focusing on the question, what do the Canadian values of diversity and inclusion mean to you? 
and artists responded obviously in many different ways. What I found interesting was uh, the continuing interest um, in, in landscape, uh, as we'll see as we go through, and the importance of landscape as an, as an artistic uh, form for Canadian artists now working in fabric, but obviously with that long history of the Group of Seven. So the exhibition was stalled, installed just before the pandemic, um, and I was able actually to tour it once. And uh, on the last day that we were open in March, or the second to last day, um, and I'll speak more about that later. So here we're looking at uh, Julie's uh, Un Monde to Make a Nation from 2020. Um, a quilt, uh, the materials are cotton, silk, wool, and uh, acrylic yarns and wire, and fusible webbing and cotton thread and monofilament. So a whole host of uh, different materials has gone into this quilt. As she explained in her artist statement, the, uh, the quilt is based on a photograph by John Kelly that was published in the Montreal Gazette. She described the quilt as a response to the political discourse in Quebec in the spring of 2019. I don't know uh, explicitly uh, you know, what the discourse at the time, but to me, it, it suggests Bill 21, the law prohibiting religious symbols in the public service. And it continues to be controversial today. Um, this, uh, this bill, and I'm hoping that we'll hear more from, from Julie um, on that subject in a few minutes. But here you can see uh, the flags of both Quebec and Canada, and a tower that occupies the central, uh, in the very center of the image, um, and it's topped by a cross that you may not see except in a detail, but it suggests the strong presence of Catholic and Christian imagery in the built environment of the province. Meanwhile, the community that you're seeing, this crowd of people, is very diverse. And you see this in the diversity of the crowd, the different hair and head coverings and all of these uh, textured services. The crowd is very lively, uh, something that you're not quite able to appreciate um, here in just a slide. So hopefully uh, when you see it in person, um, it's really quite um, uh, interesting with all of the, the different fabrics even and uh, materials, even including um, this uh, skein of, of yarn that uh, depicts, looks like someone's hair or a braid coming down from the window on the left. So a very uh, dramatic uh, introduction to the exhibition as we placed it in the hallway as you first enter Riverbrink. And right next to it, uh, Linda Mariani. I don't think Linda was able to join us today. Her work, Different But the Same, from two 2019. And she's used cotton beads and wire. So these small quilted pieces are joined together, uh, clearly meant to be a wall hanging. No confusion here between a wall hanging or a coverlet or, or any horizontal surface. Um, so none of that ambiguity. And here the artist has drew, drawn an analogy between joining these smaller quilts together and piecing, uh, attaching them in, this, in the way of, of how a community is made up of diverse individuals that combine to make a whole. And it's interesting how uh, she has used color to, to tie it together and uh, an interesting um, balance. It's not completely symmetrical, but you find the weight um, is, uh, is still pleasing to the eye, the, the weight on the extreme right. And uh, in, in, a, in a way, to me, it, it also speaks to how a community is, um, is joined together and not everyone is the same and not everything is picture perfect, but it, it is knit together as a, as a whole. And here we're looking at uh, Through My Eyes by Michelle uh, Cragen. My, I think my laptop did some autocorrect of names, so it's always helpful, not so helpful. 
a combination of commercial and hand dyed cottons, embroidery floss and cotton thread. So this is a view of the landscape of the prairies, which we may think of as being very flat and monotonous. But this work reveals the hidden depths and textures if you look more closely. And here you can see how it's installed uh, in the first room of the gallery behind our virtual tour computer screen. Then to the immediate left, we have Ilsa's Invaders from 2015. And I think um, this work speaks to uh, the concerns that many of us share. That is a concern for the environment um, here, uh, you know, the use of herbicides. And she's very effectively um, with this textured kind of wilting um, uh, threads at the bottom, suggesting the, the impact on uh, plants when doused with, with chemicals and these, these strong X's and uh, suggesting poison to the land that we're, um, that we're capable of doing in, in, in ways that um, will have long-term impact. So very much a concern uh, for the environment that joins us together. And here another installation, um, first uh, Janet Harper's Cold Magic from 2020. A combination of quilting, cotton, shears and thread. Very uh, clearly evoking this wonderful uh, phenomena called the Northern Lights. Uh, we have this very rich uh, night sky and um, even though it's very, very black, it seems to uh, sort of emit this, this warmth. And then the, as you can see in, in the detail, uh, the vertical stitching uh, kind of in a, in a curtain that, that uh, evokes the, the Northern Lights, uh, establishing the height and the way these lines uh, seem to dance and, and shimmer against the night sky. So again, the detail. And moving on to uh, Catherine Ugrin's The Dancer, made of cotton and batik fabric, cotton polyester and wool batting, cotton and rayon thread. Um, this was an, uh, part of an interesting conversation I had when, when, uh, when touring. One of the people on the tour was a bit puzzled by this one. Um, you know, the, obviously the tree form, but then there's this anthropomorphic uh, presence in the legs. And um, so he found it to be quite a puzzle. And one of the other uh, people on the tour jumped in and gave this wonderful description of his own interpretation. Uh, didn't really need me at all. Um, and this other visitor was from uh, visiting from the States from Pittsburgh, but he, he described what he imagined as this very cold Canadian prairie winter and this, you know, very stark uh, contrast between the snow and the sky and the isolation. And yet there is this hint of rebirth and rejuvenation that you get through through the legs. And uh, it, it was really, it was really lovely to hear this, this person echo almost exactly what the artist wrote in her uh, statement. Quote, resilience, unity, creativity, and strength are the unique qualities uh, required to live in one of Canada's northern climate cities. And uh, uh, Catherine is uh, from, from Manitoba. So I, I think um, our visitors, uh, our visitor kind of uh, intuitively understood uh, just looking at this picture, what it, what it meant to him anyway. And here's a, a detail where you can see some of the details of the stitching um, against, again, against that stark white uh, surface.
Now against the last wall, we have these three works. Um, first, uh, first up is Millie Cumming, uh, October Morning from 2015. And uh, she described uh, in her artist statement, this as a response to a canoe trip in Muskoka, which is really a quintessentially um, Ontario experience. Um, Certainly uh, in the fall, we get the wonderful colors, but there's also uh, here the suggestion that it's not, things have not quite turned, that there's still a fair bit of green, but it is this, this wonderful combination of, of colors that, uh, that we all um, recognize as, as an important part of our, our landscape and our, our experience of, of Canada. Another uh, strongly uh, influenced by landscape here, a particular shade of green that, um, so this work suit by Susan Selby, Green to Make My Heart Sing from 2019, birch trees, but, but the, there's a particular shade of green that you see in the springtime, I think, that this one at least suggests to me, which is a soft uh, green, so very, very dynamic um, composition and colors here um, with uh, textiles, damask, tablecloth, clothing, drapery shears, a wool blanket, a bed sheet, cotton fabric, silk scraps, cheesecloth dye, fabric paint, acrylic paint, and thread. So just this wonderful combination of different uh, materials to create such a lively uh, landscape scene. Green to make my heart sing. <coughs> Excuse me. And finally, Karen Johnson's Colors on the Rock from 2013. So the rock is the name uh, many associate with Newfoundland. And here, a reference to the colorful houses of St. John's provided the artist with inspiration. And she's worked with hand dyed cotton and recycled scraps from assorted fabrics. And here I'll show you a uh, detail. So here you get, when you look close up, you can see the references to the shape of buildings and rooftops um, that uh, we see uh, so many different uh, buildings in, in their various forms and shapes, and they evoke the construction of the built environment in this background, I think of the slate, uh, the green and, and the brown and water and sky uh, very much in, oops. Very much in uh, contrast with these very, these colorful uh, renditions of, of buildings and structures. So always, it's, uh, most artists are reminded many times by their instructors, there are no straight lines in nature. Uh, but here, just the colorful play of, of the buildings against this um, treatment of, of landscape, um, I think makes a strong statement about uh, the built environment in, in Newfoundland and St. John's. So that's everybody. Um, and. Uh, you know, the, the response to the exhibition um, has been uh, unfortunately curtailed, but uh, the people who, who did see it uh, really enjoyed uh, the, these works. And so it's been, it's been um, disappointment that not to have it open this time, but hopefully we'll be able to be welcoming visitors next month. So we can open it up to more conversation and you can tell me all the mistakes I've made in my interpretation. I'd be interested in going back to the one about the Northern Lights. Um, no, sorry, it was the one about the, um, yeah, that's gorgeous. Is there a piece of silk kind of in front and then the stitchings come or behind it or in front of it? Is it layers of? It's, it's, 
gauze or silk or something. Is Janet with us? No? Yes, I am. Uh, <laughs> sorry, I was hitting the wrong, wrong buttons. Uh, it is the, there is sheer, there are layers of different shears and a couple of pieces of solid fabrics that sort of shimmer a bit. So, and then everything is, has got stitching on top of it. So that's sort of how I constructed it. Was it, that, it does that answer the question? Oh, it, it is absolutely gorgeous. The water, I see little shapes in the water. Was that the actual material or did you form those shapes as well? No, the, it's, it's the actual material. And I'm, I'm sort of, I was thinking about land, like frozen land in the, in, in the uh, but it, it reads as water too. I'm <laughs> perfectly fine with accepting that. It's, and this is, this piece was, uh, for me was really, it, one of my earliest memories was when I, um, I arrived in Canada at the age of three and a half and we got off the train in the middle of absolutely nowhere in Eastern Alberta. And, you know, my dad was there and it was the middle of the night and the Northern lights were, were, um, were playing and it, it, you know, it's actually one of my earliest memories. And so I've been trying to do Northern lights for, ages and I think this is the best one so far. How did you get that kind of glowy shimmery look that's just in that the edge of the northern lights to the black on the bottom? Like it looks well, that, that's a, a different I'm, I'm not sure whether you can focus in on that but um, it's yeah it's it's actually further down I think um, but it, I did, it's a piece of silk that I had. Um, I, you know, I collect bits and bobs of silk from all kinds of people. You know, I love the off cuts and, uh, you know, the things at the edge. And this is a piece of hand dyed silk all the way along that band. And uh, so I just, I mean, that's how I constructed it. How big is the piece? Oh, yay by yay. <laughs> I can't remember <laughs> exactly. Um, it's probably... So you can see here? Yeah, you can see that. Okay. Thank you. Congratulations. Thank you. So we do have the catalog for sale, as you may have seen, which has the dimensions in it. I was going to say it's 26 inches by 19 inches. Thank you. <laughs> this is Kathy. I just wanted to say one more thing about Janet's piece. Um, I have that same fabric that she has on the bottom, if, if you go back to it. And it's a gorgeous blue and it has little areas that are a little bit lighter than others, just like regular batik. And the thing that struck me immediately is that the little light part at the bottom, sort of the, mental, the middle part, is a gorgeous reflection of that far, far, far star. And to me, it just absolutely gives the beautiful, beautiful depth that's in this piece. Mm, so well done, way to go. <laughs> I was, I was debating, like I thought maybe I should put a, a bunch of stars. Originally, that's what my thought was. And then I thought, maybe not. Maybe just one that would sort of, um, uh, that would be the focus kind of thing. So. Yeah, it's absolutely beautiful. Thank you. Um, well, if no one else is talking, I'd like to jump in one more. The, um, the one about um, the dancer. So it's number 12, I think. Yeah. No, going down the other way. The one like the tree. It's called the yeah, dancer. Sorry, I'm going the wrong way. There it is. Yeah. You showed a close up of the, the legs. 
And what I noticed when you did that was the detailing in there, there are little leaves. And then looking through, it almost looks like veins, like in a body, like life veins going through all, and goes right up through all the branches. Um, and I really thought, I thought how, how it really mimics the human body, but it's true that in, in winter, there's still this life force that's going through the trees inside the sap and we don't, we don't see it, we don't notice it. And she brings it to life here. It's just gorgeous. This is actually based on um, a beautiful photograph by my friend, Dimitri Kirshner. Uh, we decided to have an exhibit called Viewpoints where we played off of each other's uh, work. And so all that background stitching is actually the background of the photograph. Um, I blew up the photograph and I took a uh, solvy water soluble stabilizer and I traced the whole background and I pinned it on my piece and I stitched it so that it's identical to Dimitri's background. Um, because in my piece, I wanted to have three elements. I wanted that identical background that to me sort of represents sort of the, the black and white, what is what, winter is winter, the world is the world kind of thing. I wanted a recognizable element. So that's the tree, which symbolizes kind of more of the culture and the way that we live. And then I wanted the fantastical element, which is the tutu. And in Dimitri's photograph, that is all of the bare branches and the little winter berries. But I, I have always seen it as a tutu. And to me, that represents attitudes and behaviors and philosophies and respect and all of that um, emotional and kind of things that can make our world a better place. Um, so so that was what I was thinking. And then all the other things fell into place as I was creating it. But that background is really, that is the identical background to what is in the photograph. It took a very long time, a lot of starting and stopping. And I am an expert in tucking in threads now. <laughs> Because you don't really get the um, the texture of the tree, uh, the the threads when you see it in person are are very textured and, and three dimensional. So um, you don't. I mean, you can have a suggestion of it here in the photograph, but it's it's very very textured. So interesting. I I really like the way. I, I mean. The, the the background and all of that stopping and starting. I was looking at it and thinking, did she tuck all those ends? My goodness. Um, but I I really love the background and the way sort of the texture of snow and uh and 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 just like how how much detail there is in in uh in in the landscape when you get up close, like that you don't see from far away, but when you really look, it's there. Right. I, I was wondering, uh, Karen, um, uh, Karen Johnson's piece on the St. John's houses, I, I really love the different sort of architectural references you, you make in all of your little squares and uh it's i think it's it's really um yeah it's i just i i, I think it, that adds so much to it the 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 different uh the different pieces within the squares once again that you don't really see from far away but once you're up close you're you're seeing it a lot and uh I just wanted to say, Karen, I, I don't know whether you had a, a systematic way of, of, of assigning those or is it sort of random? And are those pieces, I'm, I'm, I'm not sure. I know in some of your work you do, you do a small piece and then attach it to a larger piece. Is that what you've done here or is it pieced in? <laughs> okay, <laughs> you, you've asked a lot of things. Yeah, um, sorry. <laughs> originally, well, the background, first of all, I created the background using a lot of fabric with different textures to emphasize the texture of the landscape in the background. 
and originally my plan was to do some wonky houses climbing up the hill and it just for me it looked boring it was just houses they're beautiful but uh, so I sort of put that aside for a little while and I had when I had started this piece I just finished hand dyeing a whole I think I, it was a whole color wheel that I had hand dyed and so I thought well I'll test out the colors on a mock-up of the background and see what colors I'm going to use. So I cut all these tiny little squares to put in the background and it looks so cool. I thought, oh, I don't need the houses. This is really working. And that's, I like to work like that. I don't have a finished idea in my mind when I start. My pieces evolve as they go along. And the, so those little squares are fused on. And then I thought, well, this piece is reflecting the exuberance of the, the houses in St. John's. And so uh, I need to, I, I didn't want to do little houses on there, but what I did is from the pictures I had of the houses, I took the different architectural elements. And I think I ran, it's been a while, but I just spread them out and randomly quilted different uh, um, designs onto the little squares and uh, I was really pleased with how it evolved that way. So lots of squares. <laughs> yeah. And do you have the whole color wheel on here or is it just? I think I used all the colors that I had on in the color wheel or that I had dyed there. Um, I don't think I kept track of that at all. <laughs> Very clever. And I've, I've, I've never been to Newfoundland. It's the one province I haven't been to. And, uh, but I've always been drawn to the pictures I've seen of houses in St. In St. John's. And I think this, uh, this was made about the same time that the TV show Republic of Doyle was on. And so every week you'd get these images of all the houses in St. John's. So that's probably part of my inspiration too. <laughs> it's gorgeous. I didn't realize that we had the artists here. <laughs> I didn't. <laughs> Is, is uh, Julie here, the one that did that to, to Umond or that to make a nation? No, I guess I'm... Yes, yeah, I'm right here. Um, were you joking about Rapunzel? <laughs> I, I saw that coming down and I saw the, the, the French flag, the Canadian flag, and yes. I thought, you know, Rapunzel it brought me back to that fairy tale where you have to guess the name of the, the person to, to save her life, whatever it was. And, and, um, and I thought the naming is, is important. And here she is like this little <laughs> whimsical figure for me, but it hits home about, you know, trying to find our name in terms of the French and the Canadian, that, that kind of tension. You know, Rapunzel's there and you have Batman who's there. In fact, okay, so I cheated in the final product that's actually hanging. I have many more uh, finished heads. Um, and uh, so, you know, and I have there Robin Hood's in there and I have uh, so many other characters that I wanted to put there. And of course I ran out of time and I had to stop. So, but Rapunzel, there is in the actual photo, there is somebody in that window without the, the head sticking out. But I thought this was a good place to put somebody different, you know, because I wanted all my heads to represent every everybody in Canada, like multiculturalism. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it certainly adds a very kind of playful note uh, to something that is, an, is sometimes an awkward conversation, a difficult conversation. So. Yes, I, I, yep. we, 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 saw, we saw Batman, I forgot to mention that. Uh, so it's one of those 
uh, works that takes time take takes you, takes time to look at it, and you pick out all these little details. So, which is the which is the bridge that we're looking at in the background? Uh, so, uh, this is um, the the demonstration was taking part on uh, René Lévesque Boulevard. So that bridge is Jacques Cartier, and you're looking east in Montreal. So you're looking, well, it's the street east. The island is not exactly go to going towards east, but if you drive east on this particular road, this is one of the biggest boulevard. It really crosses downtown. Um, so that's Jacques okay. Cartier. And uh, if you cross that, you end up in, in Longueuil on the South Shore. Right. And um, so these elements are actually there. This hotel, it's called Hotel Le Roberval, but I wrote Montreal because I wanted to identify that this is something that was happening in Montreal. The, 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 this whole, um, everything that's happening with Bill 21, the um, uh, prohibiting religious um, uh, um, symbols in people who... Uh, work in position of authority with the government, like including teachers. That what, that's how this quilt started. And I took a long time thinking about how I would develop this, the quilt. And then eventually it changed, like um, uh, it, it became more about multiculturalism, which is really important for me. Although I live in Quebec, in Montreal, I always identify myself as Canadian first and French Canadian second. Like I, 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 you know, my husband is Indo-Canadian. His family is from India originally, but they are Canadians. My neighbor is Greek Canadian. And I find it's, we all bring a little something, whoever we are, wherever we're from, to make this nation very multicultural. Um, I, to me, it's keeping, our roots, keeping track of our roots, but we can all be Canadians. And of course you have the, in the original photograph, it was very colorful, you know, so many people were wearing, okay, maybe there wasn't a witch or, <laughs> you know, Batman was not really there, but um, uh, that was my inspiration. It's just everybody coming together. And yes, maybe it was originally, there's a political thing in there about Bill 21, but ultimately it's a reflection of my values as, as a Canadian first. Thank you. So any other comments, questions? It's lovely to have the artists with us today. Um, yeah. Maybe the artists who are with us, can they just talk a little bit about their pieces? Can we flip through them again? Those who haven't had a chance to do that, that's such a privilege to have the artists here. So we've had Julie. I don't think Linda is with us. No, Linda's not able to be here. Okay, and Michelle has, Michelle? Yeah, I'm here. Can you hear me? Yeah. Okay. Um, what would you like to know? <laughs> it, well, just, you know, no pressure, just if there was anything. Um, I, I guess, yeah, this was, uh, we, I, I don't do the driving when we go on um, on our road trips. And so I have a little sketchbook in the car and I, I take photos as we drive along and I make sketches. And this is kind of what I see is the fact that, because we travel Manitoba from, we live in Saskatchewan, so we go Manitoba and also Alberta. And the land is, uh, it varies so very, very much because you do think of it as flat. And where we live in southeastern Saskatchewan, it, um, parts of it are really flat and then all of a sudden you travel a little way and and it's not flat anymore and the the kind of the dead trees that are sitting over there um, 2011 there was a, a lot 
so the land got flooded due to rains, et cetera, et cetera. And I think as a result of that, um, near the, what we call sloughs, which are bodies of, of water sometimes sitting out in the middle of a field, trees seem to die. And that just really struck me one day that uh, all around things were green, but there'd be all these dead trees. So I guess that's what it's based on, yeah. Are we looking at grain elevators there on the- And those are little, yeah, those are little grain elevators um, off there in the distance. So that's, um, I don't, and I like to do landscapes. So I just, uh, and, and I just, and I guess when I make it, I just uh, gather fabrics together and just start layering and go from there. Shaping and layering. Great, thank you. Wait a I really like the, the elevators as sort of a focal point point in the distance and I'm uh, did you put them on afterwards so like are they applique on or are were um, they actually Janet um I, I have a friend here who she's a hand embroiderer and she's kind of um giving me a little bit of influence to try some to doing some hand stitching so those are just all hand stitched using uh Oh, whatever, you know, that straight stuff where you fill it in. I can't remember what, I, what you call it That's right stitch. now. Yeah, so those are all just hand-stitched on. Um, and all the, the, the little um, kind of grasses and stuff at the bottom, those are all hand-stitched on. Um, it's only the trees that I did with, uh, with Salvi. Cool. Thank you. When you're driving along, do you actually see layers of color like this? I do. Oh, I do. Not so much maybe with the oranges and stuff. Sometimes it's more greens and yellows and browns. Mm -hmm. But in the fall, um, after, after the harvest and whatnot, and as colors change, sometimes in the ditches, whatever growth is in the ditches sometimes will take on you know, some of the weeds take on like a fire red color and different things like that. So different times of the year, you do see all those colors, maybe just not all at once. Beautiful. Thank you. Sorry, wrong way. Um, Ilse? Ilse? She was Am I muted? Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Um, I, I tell stories sometimes with my artwork. And this one, because my daughter cried to me about what was going on with, with her garden, um, it was a labor of love from her husband um, that created this havoc in her garden, and she had no vegetables that year. So I looked at it from a point of view, a labor of love, and it created problems in the environment. And this is what's happening a lot of places here in, in Canada or well, all over the world. People are doing things, not really understanding why they're doing things and they're harming the environment in a variety of ways. And this was one of my pieces to make a comment about watch out, let's pay more attention to the environment and stop destroying it. Uh, those pieces at the bottom, you said they were threads. It's a combination of, of little pieces of fabric plus threads that I stitched together, uh, wanting to show um, some of the results of this chemical that her husband applied to the garden. Um, the, the flowers and the plants that grew, the vegetables, all looked similar to those pieces at the bottom. They were um, strange shapes, green but strange shapes. And so this is what I, I did. Um, I also at attached um, shiny fabrics um, to the center part wanting to show that you can't always see what's in the ground and what you're um, symbolizing um, that you are destroying things and, and you have to look beyond um, what's happening. So any questions? <laughs> Powerful. It's beautiful. Thank you. I think it does convey a, a little bit of that menacing, though, as, as lovely as it is. 
and uh, I presume that was something of your intention that yes that we need to be it, wary we need to be aware and, and um, careful yeah I use colorful colors to attract but I've got the X's in there also showing that you know this is uh, chemicals are dangerous mm -hmm. pay attention to what you're doing mm -hmm. yeah okay thank you um so we've done northern lights and the dancer um millie coming sure uh, okay hi everybody it's great to to hear the descriptions of everybody. Um, there's two things I guess I'd like to say about this. Um, one is that um, this is important. a lot of my pieces are just based on the feelings I get uh, cent centered deeply. And years ago, uh, Freeman Patterson, who, who's a well-known uh, photographer, Canadian photographer, and I once heard him talk about his Namib, Namib uh, desert piece, pieces and said that he is sure that everybody in the world has one place that is their spiritual home. And that always had resonated for me. I have been canoeing and taking photographs uh, since 1955 in Muskoka. Um, and and the pieces aren't sort of totally representative, but more about the feelings I get. I don't know if you can see this, but this is the, the uh, actual photograph, the feeling that I got for this piece. Um, but it, but it, it doesn't really look anything like, like the photograph, but I wanted to do the feeling. Um, the other reason I, ch I chose this was that last October, the, the Thanksgiving, the flowers, the, the leaves and so the coloration was, was outstanding. And we happened to have New Zealand relatives visiting. They were, they were well-traveled um, travelers, but they were totally blown away by the, by the Thanksgiving colors. And, and uh, the one last thing I'd like, and so again, this feeling of, of the how lucky we are to have Thanksgiving or, or to have the, the um, foliage in the fall. And the last thing that's always important to me is, is the mixture of fabrics, that they may come from different continents. Some are hand done, some are commercial, uh, some are made in... in uh, poor countries but all together they they do to me uh, represent this fabric of, of our Canada so that's what I was trying trying to convey in that piece nice thank you and one last one Susan Selby Um, this piece is also about uh, a feeling and as Kathy said living on the prairies you have to be very uh, resilient and by the end of April your soul just longs for green and you're not there yet it's at least the middle towards the end of May before uh, the trees turn green and they they the leaves come out very quickly. Over three days, it'll go from looking like winter to looking like this. And it just, it just renews, <laughs> renews me that, uh, that bright green. And they're actually poplar trees rather than birch trees, even though they look much the same in this piece. And the, uh, the forests here, the trees tend to be uh, spindly <laughs> and uh, and very gnarly, the poplar trees. And I wanted to capture that as well. 
Susan, did you use, uh, did you do some painting on the fabric for the tree trunks or was? Um, yeah, they're, those are, they are painted, yes. And those are um, applique on, mostly. Some of the background ones are just, are just paint, but the ones that are very tree-like are applique. And the leaves are done sort of with a con confetti technique or? A uh, confetti and then overlaid with some sheer that was painted green. And yeah, I just, I just kept going with everything. <laughs> Great. And the base fabric is an old worn uh, damask tablecloth that I did. Uh, put dye on it and it just dyes so beautifully. Just soaks it right up and then the texture of the damask adds to the, the variations in the colors. I think it's definitely something we can, we can all relate to, even those of us who don't live on the prairies, that when spring comes, it's, it's a wonderful feeling. Okay, well, um, unless there are some other questions and comments. Um, I don't know, Tracy, you want to wrap up uh, here? Um, just... Sure, I'll just, uh, first of all, like to thank you, Deborah, for acting as the uh, juror and curator to select these works. Um, I think you picked an interesting collection and it's wonderful to see them together, both for their diversity uh, in theme and techniques that are used to create them and, uh, and showing it at uh, yeah. Riverbrink. That's wonderful. Um, and if I may, I'd also like to say that the exhibition, once it leaves uh, Riverbrink, will be traveling across Canada for three years. So I do hope that people are, uh, in this area are able to get to see it at River Brink, as you say, hopefully in the next few weeks. Um, when it leaves River Brink at the, in early September, it will go to Weyburn, Saskatchewan from uh, September 18th to October 31st and will be exhibited at the Weyburn City Hall Gallery. Uh, in from the 2nd of March 2021 to the 10th of April 21, uh, it will be at the Agnes Jameson Gallery in Minden, Ontario. Mm -hmm. And from October 7th until November 10th 2022, it will be at the Craft Council of Newfoundland and Labrador in St. John's, Newfoundland. There are many other places in the works, but those ones I can publicly announce at this time. So we're just thrilled that there's so much interest in this work and that uh, art quilts are, are being seen and appreciated across the country. Um, I Great, see, so if you could um, I see this is being recorded. Will this be available on YouTube or some other way? I have so many friends who would just, just love to have watched this with me. And I'm wondering if there's a way they can see that. Before they yes. go. So we, we have a YouTube channel and it's um, uh, there's a link on our website and so it'll, it'll just take a bit to convert this but then it will be posted there. Wonderful, we will let people know. And Tracy, if you could uh, send those dates and places to me, uh, we can help to publicize that also. I will do. Thanks very much. Excellent. Excellent. Well, thank you all for, uh, for joining us. And um, it's been great meeting you in this, uh, in this virtual way uh, and hearing what, what you are working on and interested in. It's always very enriching uh, to get the artist's perspective uh, on, on work. So thank you all for, for joining. And uh, maybe we'll meet at some point in person. <laughs>